We're going to step through the installation of SharePoint 2013 single server deployment. We are not going to use the built-in database provided by the installer for SQL Server 2008 R2 Express Edition. We are going to use a previously installed instance of SQL Server 2008 R2 or SQL Server 2012. Single server deployment is good for evaluation, development, training and demonstration, or perhaps pilot evaluation. We should note this method is preferred over the single server with the built-in database deployment since this method can be scaled out if adopted by the business unit. Hardware requirements are generally a 64-bit 4-core processor and 80 gigabyte hard drive where we vary is the RAM. 8 gigabytes for the minimum services installed for SharePoint, 10 gigabytes if we take that and include Visual Studio 2012, and 24 gigabytes if we install all the available services for SharePoint. Minimum recommended services for development are listed here. Minimum software requirements begin with Windows Server 2008 R2, Service Pack 1, 64-bit, or Windows Server 2012, 64-bit. We'll also need .NET Framework version 4.5. And after the prerequisites are installed, Microsoft recommends installing the following four patches. Minimum software requirements also continues with prerequisites which are installed by the product preparation tool. For example, the web server role, application server role, and .NET Framework version 4.5, to name a few, will be installed. As a side note, client computers are recommended to have Windows 7, Silverlight 3, Office 2013, or an older version with the latest service pack. However, before we begin the installation, we need to create a minimum of three Active Directory user accounts. The first, SP SQL, or SPSQL, will serve as a service account for the SQL Server Database Engine Service and SQL Agent Service. I'm using a SQL Server instance previously installed, and if you would like, there are also SQL Server tutorials available walking through the installation and configuration for the appropriate service accounts. Next is SP Admin, which you use to install, set up, and run the product configuration wizard. We also need the SP Farm account, which is used to configure and manage the farm also for the application pool identity for central administration. And lastly, to run the Microsoft Foundation workflow timer service. Also highlighted is the SQL Server login created with security admin and DB creator roles. These roles for SP form are configured by the installer during the installation process. All this information is available at the following URLs. I've highlighted the URL which is directly related to this installation. We're going to perform our installation on Windows Server 2008 R2. The first thing we need to do is add SP admin to our local administrators group. So click Start, right-click Computer, click Manage. Go to Configuration, Local Users and Groups, select Groups, right-click Administrators, and click Properties. Add SP Admin. Click OK. The next thing we need to do is within SQL Server Management Studio. We need to ensure we have the appropriate roles for the SP Admin account. Let's log in as a sysadmin. Go to Security, Logins, and we do not have an SP Admin account here. So let's right click, New Login, let's search. We need to change our location to a domain. Select like domain 01, SP admin, check names, and server roles. We want to select DB creator and security admin. Select OK. The last thing we need to do is we need to set maximum degree of parallelism for the server. So right click the server, go to properties, on advanced, down at the bottom, we have max degree of parallelism. Highlight the value and enter 1. Select OK. Close Management Studio. And let's log out and log back in as our SP admin. I've just logged in as SP admin 
I've already created a shortcut to my installation folder. Let's go in there and start our splash screen. The first thing we need to do is install the software prerequisites. Here's a list of the prerequisites, which should look familiar. Accept the license agreements. Click finish and we'll do a reboot. We've restarted and the installation has continued. We have to click finish to do a restart. We just finished the reboot again and now we will continue just like we did before. Our prerequisites have finished the installation. Let's click finish. Let's open up our installation files again. Open up our splash screen. So we've already done the prerequisites, now we want to do the install SharePoint server. Here we need to enter in our product key and then click continue. Let's click accept and then continue. We could do the standalone installation, but that would be our built-in server, which we don't want to do. That would install SQL Server 2008 R2 Express Edition. We want to do a complete installation on a previously installed instance of SQL Server. Choose complete and then install now. Now we've finished the installation and we're ready to begin the configuration wizard. Ensure you have checked the box for run the SharePoint products configuration wizard or if you want to access it later click start all programs Microsoft SharePoint 2013 products and the last item is SharePoint 2013 products configuration wizard. Go ahead and click close. I'm going to go ahead and exit the SharePoint 2013 splash screen. Let's click next. We'll say yes to restart our services. We're going to create a new server farm. Next database server. We're going to use the default for SharePoint config. Username, this is going to be your SP farm. Oops, I forgot the domain name. Password. And our passphrase for our farm, which is used to add and remove servers from our farm. The port number for the central administration is a random port number. I like to use one over and over so that way I can remember it. We'll continue with the NTLM security settings. Here's a summary of our options. SharePoint 2013 does not use advanced settings. Now we've finished the products configuration wizard. Again, here's a summary of the uh, wizard configuration. Since we do not have the browser configured, we're prompted for our user credentials. The first dialog that comes up is the sign up for the customer experience improvement program. For this demonstration we're going to say no. 
that's it for the installation we're now at the central administration the configuration wizards your next step would be to click start the wizard to begin configuring your farm thank you for watching everyone we'll have videos for configuring the farm here soon if you found this video helpful please don't forget to subscribe down below